The Hoop Extravaganza is right around the corner. December 20th and 21st, coming up on the weekend, the undefeated and number 14 team in the country, Whitehaven Tigers, are going into the house of Tipton Rosemark. The South Alabama signee, Alex Anderson, the 6'7 Ford, is going to try to give Whitehaven their first loss of the season while the Tigers look to stay on top in the country. Arlington is going against one of the top teams in Arkansas, but the Tigers are no snubs. New coach and staff, new players over at the program, but Jonesboro, big time team. Mitchell, also Andre Turner, the general, is bringing in the humble and hungry Mitchell Tigers to take on South Haven. Bolivar Central and Potts Kemp coming in. Moz and Fayette where you might want to be there the 20th and 21st of December. Hey guys, welcome into Ultimate Preps. Cottrell Macklin here at Lausanne. White Haven and Christian Academy coming all the way from Kentucky. They don't even have any double A or single A or triple A. There's only one one state champion in the state of Kentucky. So you know they came ready to ball. They have Shelby Calhoun, who signed with Virginia Tech. She's going high major D1. But I tell you one thing, Whitehaven are no snubs. They got a big-time guard in Sequoia Almond, but they also have a fully loaded roster as well. Take a look at this battle here at Lausanne. They had to fill their tanks up a couple times, so you know they were mad when they got to Memphis. Traveling all the way from Kentucky, Christian Academy of Louisville. The girls are big time. They are always finishing in the top teams in the state of Kentucky. And as I told you from the beginning, there are no sections. There's no double A, triple A, single A. There is one state champion in the state of Kentucky. So this team is coming ready to ball. But I tell you one thing, don't come to Memphis thinking you're getting an easy walk in a park like you're in the middle of Midtown. No sir. Whitehaven's going to put it on you tough. And started off early is Kennedy Claybrook. Going straight to the cup, getting the bucket to go. But i tell you one thing, Whitehaven not getting those first two buckets to go. They did not count either one of those buckets. So who got the first bucket of the game? None other than the PG for C-A-L. Cal coming from Kentucky. The PG is really good as well. Number 23, J.L. McClure with a nice bucket there. And then Kennedy saying, last time you didn't let me get an easy bucket. So let me get a hard one. Let me cross you over, take you to the cup, finish off the glass for a nice bucket. Next play down on the other side. Louisville's team coming in for an easy bucket. Nice bucket off the glass for Mia Beam. She got that one to go for Christian Academy of Louisville. On the other side, bucket for Whitehaven, and then spinning around the defense, putting it right over the iron. Inside the paint is the Virginia Tech signee for the nice bucket, Shelby Calhoun. Kick outside once again. It's Mia Beam for a knockdown three from outside. On the other side, Shelby Brown, big-time player for Whitehaven, got the bucket to go there inside the paint, and then playing some good D, but spinning around that defense, getting a nice bucket is Sydney getting that nice bucket to go for Cal and then a kick over to the corner a knockdown three for the Lady Tigers Brown starting to click on all cylinders here to get the game going and then on a fast break missing but getting the rebound putting it back is Brown giving them the one point lead heading into the second quarter the bench trying to keep this team going use the pump fake go past the defense and go up for an easy one there's Brown for another bucket Jay is going to kick it over to the guard she goes past the defense for a bucket. Sydney in the 11th grade. The junior is balling. She's got one more year of ball but here she is learning each and every day from Shelby Calhoun who takes it to the cup on that one getting the and one bucket and heading to the free throw line. Here's the PG Sequoia Allman missing the easy one kicking it off off the rebound though. Kennedy finding an easy lay in off the glass Claybrook starting to click down low in the paint. On the other side Cal gets their own rebound. Puts it right back up over the iron for an easy easy too. The fans are loving that one. And I tell you one thing, they travel real well. They had their fan section in the building all the way from Kentucky. Claybrook's going to cross over, kick it over to the wing, and she's threes, please. All day long, if you leave a wide open, then you are in trouble. There's a nice bucket once again. Next play down, going straight to the cup for another easy bucket for the Haven. It's going to cause for a timeout 
from Cal. They try to take that timeout and recoup from what they can, but they come out of that timeout giving up another easy bucket. It's going to send us into halftime with a decent lead. 32-23, Christian Academy need to pick it up here in the second half. Yeah, we talked about the hoop extravaganza the 20th and 21st at Tipton Rosemark, but one week after that, Fayetteware High School is going to be hosting the 30th annual Larry Ransom Christmas Classic. 27th to 28th, big time roster. Take a look at this schedule. This is just the beginning. We're a few weeks away, but take a look at this. Second half, let's jump into the third quarter. Who's going to start it off? Uh, none other than the same player that started it off here in the first half. It's the point guard. Once again, Jaya McClure with the knockdown jumper this time. She started the game with the layup, but here you got two back-to-back -back threes from her. She is locked in. Not telling you what type of juice or water she was drinking in the locker room at halftime, but i tell you one thing. She came out gunning that thing from downtown. This time she ends up losing the ball, asking for a foul, not getting it. Haven going on the fast break, going up and under for a finish off the glass for that bucket. Jay is going to look up on a fast break and Sequoia's there to block it. It goes out of bounds. Way for her to get back. That's the way you get back on defense. 43-36. Sequoia is going to kick it over to Kennedy. Claybrook's going to find the guard over in the corner once again. I told you. Wide open. You might as well knock it down and be through with it. Over in the corner. Another one for the Haven. On the fast break. Using the up and under pump fake. She gets the floater to get inside the paint. But next play down, they get another basket to go. This time it's outside the arc for a three. Whitehaven's coming down on the next play down, setting up the offense, trying to find the wide open play, and they do just that. Claybrook's going to knock it down after a decent pass from Allman, and then getting the rebound, throwing it up with one hand. Claybrook once again, back-to-back -back buckets for her and the Haven to try to extend this lead. Jay is going to find Calhoun. And kick over to the corner. Threes, please. Another knockdown jumper once again. Man, Sydney is shooting that thing from the corner, knocking it down. Great defense right here by Cal. Called for a jump ball, and it's going the other way. It's looking good right now for Cal, but not when Brown's on the team. She gets an easy basket there, but the next play down, she ends up overthrowing it, and it ends up with a steal. Shelby Calhoun comes up with the board, goes on the other side, and gets it to rattle in. 46-53. to 53. It's a seven-point lead right now for the Haven. Then Almond's going to find the cutter to go down low, missing the easy one. That goes, just goes to show you how crazy this one got here as the game was wrapping out. Almost a layup there for Cal, but ends up losing the ball. Head coach right there, Pride Moore, trying to do what he can to get his team back on top. But right now, they're starting to get to the fouling stage. They got to do what they can to get the free throws. So what does Almond and the squad do? Nothing but knock the shot down. Go to the free throw line and knock that one down. Here's Jaya, though. She's not going home early. She says, I drove all this way not to lose, so we got to try to do what we can. Next play, though, Kennedy comes up with the ball. It's going to get called for a foul. She heads back to the free throw line once again. Jaya on the other side trying to get the easy layup, but that was pretty much the story of the night. Let's wrap it out. You got Christian Academy of Louisville coming all the way in from Kentucky, but this time they couldn't get the dub, the first win. They got another game. They have a matchup with another Memphis team. Let's see how that goes. Sequoia's got a little bit to say to you. Um, big time game from you guys. You look really good, but when you come to match up against teams here in Memphis, what did you notice as far as going against a high level team like Whitehaven? Uh, Whitehaven was a very good team. They moved the ball great, uh, great on defense, very active. Um, we came here just to get better. Coach said in the locker room, um, our main goal was to come down here and to get better. And no matter if we win or lose, ultimately we want to win, but um, to get better here and then go back to Kentucky and hopefully make a run. Uh, with some teams up there. When you're thinking about the changes that you guys need to make, as far as tomorrow, just matching up, coming back again, um, what do you think you guys need to change in order to change that loss to a win this time? Um, definitely be more physical. Um, coming down here, we knew um, there are girls that are physical, and um, but playing them tonight, we were like, it kind of was a wake-up call. Um, so it definitely be more physical and um, just having more energy on the court, maybe talking more on defense or just hyping each other up more. Um, that, that, the little stuff like that will go long ways, so stuff like that. 
And then last thing, um, you chose Virginia Tech. Why that school specifically over all the others? Um, definitely the coaching staff, uh, Coach Brooks. I, I walked on campus and I was like, Dad, I want to go here. This is the perfect fit for me. He's um, a family guy. Um, that's important to me because nine of my uh, family was here tonight and they travel with me everywhere. And so I wanted to be in a home away from home. So um, he made that very clear to me that they're going to be a family without my family there. And um, he's a great coach and uh, it's a come up for Virginia Tech. So um, that's why I chose Virginia Tech. And the game going on, you can hear, um, you can hear all the way down the court if you want. 